Here's a follow-up to the walk cycle animation tutorial series that we just finished up. In this one we're going to be going over some more advanced techniques so this one isn't recommended for beginners. I'm going to go over what I did to further clean up this animation and then I'm going to go over some more advanced techniques. So first of all what I did, I adjusted the loop of our main animation so that it starts and ends at the apex of the swing of her arms. And I'll show you why I did that. Building off of the null technique, I went in and created more nulls for the forearm, the upper arm, and shoulder of both sides of the body. I then animated these swinging back and forth, and then I pointed the corresponding bones at them so she gets a nice, even-looking animation. So you can see as I scrub through the timeline, you can see these animating back and forth. And there is a lot more going on in the scene now. That's why my machine is really struggling to get more than a couple of frames per second. If we switch to our top view, we can better see the animation of these nulls. And then if we look at our left view, at our shoulders, you can see I just kind of animated them up and down. And they are a little bit behind the body to keep her shoulders back. Even though we did point the head at a null, it is pointing straight up because the head bone is pointing straight up from the body. But if we look at her face throughout the animation, it's kind of following her shoulders rather than staying straight forward. Because the null that it is pointing at does not affect the twist of the head bone. So how do we get her face to look at something? First of all, what we're going to need is another null. Let's create a new null, and this one we are going to call controller. So we're going to need this controller right in the middle of her head bone, but we're going to parent it to her neck. So first of all, what we want to do, to get it right where her head bone is, let's change controller parent, and let's find her head. And we do not want it to parent in place. We want it to snap to where her head is. So let's accept, and that will snap it right to her head. And then what we want to do is we're going to change the parent again. We're going to change it to upper neck, but we want it to stay in place. So let's keep parent in place. Now we're going to get our joint editor tool right here. And we're going to grab the top of the head bone right here. We're going to bring it down where that green arrow is. And then we're going to move it forward. So now whatever we have affecting this is going to be out the front of the face. Okay, let's go back to our universal tool. Next what we're going to do, we're going to select the head and in our parameters, we are going to right click on bend and we're going to go into edit mode. Once in edit mode, we're going to right click again and we're going to show in property hierarchy. And that's going to bring up this window. You probably don't have this window docked, so it's probably going to pop up and you can go ahead and dock it here. So what we want to do, it's going to highlight where our head bend is. You're going to open up. Let's move this over so we can read everything. You're going to open up controllers here. And first stage, this is where we're going to drag and drop something. So grab your controller, select that, go into rotation, 
and X rotate, we're just going to drag and drop that right here. So now that rotate is going to be affecting the head. So open this up and you can see the controller X rotate is going to be affecting the bend of the head. So let's do the same thing with the Y rotate. So in head, you're going to want to right click on twist, show in property hierarchy, come down to controllers. In first stage, we're going to grab the controller Y rotate and drag and drop that right on there. So you can see that. Go back to perspective view. Let's create a new null. This one, let's call target. I'm going to go into front view just so we can get that target right in front of the face. And then left view. And then we're going to take this again far out in front of the face. This is what she's going to be looking at. So now let's grab our controller here. And in parameters, we're going to point at target, except. And we can go ahead and right click and get out of edit mode. So now that is that null is pointing at the other null and it's controlling the head. But we still have keyframes on the head, so we need to get rid of all those. So what we want to do here is right click down here where there are no Ana blocks and we're going to bake to studio keyframes. Yes. And that has transferred all control over to our timeline. And what we're going to do next is go into keymate and get rid of all of the keyframes on the head. So in keymate bring down hip, abdomen, abdomen, neck, neck upper, and head, and we're going to bring up all of the transforms here. So open this up, and we're going to select all of these keyframes, and we're going to hit this X. So if you scrub through at this point, you can see she's still not pointing at the target because we set the head to point at the null above. So let's bring up head, let's do point at, none. And you can see if we move this around, her head's going to follow that. You can even animate this if you want to, so that her head will animate over the course of the animation.